Hi everyone. Hi. It's great to see you again today. I just love stories. Do you like stories? What about you, Charlie? I love stories. What kind of stories do you like, Charlie? I like true stories. Yeah, I love true stories as well. Do you like true stories? Or what kind of stories do you like? Well, today we're going to hear a story about someone who loved missionary stories. I like missionary stories too. Can you remember what a missionary is? That's right, someone who goes to a different place to tell them about the Lord Jesus. Let's listen and see who our story is about today. I have a question that I want you to think about. Imagine I asked you, what is a Bible? How would you explain it? What would you say it is? Well, the Bible is God's word. It's everything he has told us about himself, about his son Jesus, who he is, and how we can have a relationship with him. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably heard what a Bible is. You know, maybe you even have one in your house, or you know somebody that has a Bible. You might have seen one, but you've probably heard about what it is. Well, there's some people who have never heard about what a Bible is. They have no idea that the Bible even exists, and they've definitely never seen one. We're going to learn about a group of people who are just like this in this week's missionary story. You see, there was a country in South America called Ecuador. And in Ecuador, there was a group of people that lived there called the Aucas. Now, they were a tribe of people who lived in the, in the jungle in Ecuador. And they had a very different life than the type of life we have today. When we think of our life and the things that we do, we think of how we like to play video games or we like to watch TV or how we go to school in a building, how we cook food um, in a microwave or in the oven. But these people lived in a completely different way. While they didn't have the things that we have, like video games and TVs, they had some other really interesting things to keep them entertained. There was lots of exotic animals where they lived, like um, parrots and monkeys, and um, they could play games in the river, they could go swimming, they could go exploring and hunting in the jungle. And there was a young girl called Diama, and she was part of this Auka tribe, her and her family. And she would spend her days uh, swimming in the river, like you can see in this picture, and, and, and playing with all the amazing animals around her, and, and watching her father hunt for birds or monkeys, because they would eat uh, this type of food, birds and monkeys. That might sound strange to us, but I'm sure if we told the Auka people some of our favourite foods, like cheeseburgers or pizza, they'd be very confused by that too. And you know, Diama and her family would have lived in a large hut, like you can see in this picture. And they wouldn't have furniture like we have, like beds and couches and things, but they would sleep in hammocks and they would cook their food on fires. So they didn't have electricity and they definitely wouldn't have had Wi-Fi or anything. But the people there were very smart, they were very intelligent and they had learned how they could live from the jungle. They had learned what types of food, what type of plants were good to eat and which ones were poisonous and that they definitely shouldn't eat. And they were good at being able to track uh, footprints, so seeing which animals had gone which way so that maybe they could hunt them or even finding out if people had been around them. And so Diamond grew up learning all of these survival tactics about how to survive in the jungle. But she had lots of questions about some other things in life. You know, Diamond asked her granddad one day, about God. She wanted to know who God is, what God was like. And her granddad told her about what he had believed about God, about what he had learned. And he said that God had made everything on earth, but then after he'd made it all, he went back up into the sky and that he would never come back. So this is what some of the Elka people taught about God. And this made Daima kind of sad to think that God would make everything in the world and make the people, but that she might never be able to know him because he would never come back to earth. You know, unfortunately, Daima had never heard about Jesus. She never heard about how Jesus saves us from our sin and about how he wants to have a relationship with us. She had never heard about how the Bible exists to tell us all about God and how he, how it can answer all of the questions that we have about God. You know, there's a few reasons why the Elka people had never heard about God, but one of the biggest ones was about how people were afraid of them. You see, the Elkas were a very dangerous tribe, and other people were just so terrified of them. They would try and kill anybody who entered their part of the jungle. 
And you know, in fact, Auka wasn't even their proper name. They called themselves the Waudani people, which means just means the people. But other people around them began to call them the Aukas. And Auka means naked savage. So this showed how fierce and how dangerous they were. And it mightn't be a nice name, but it's what they came to be known as by the people, the other tribes that surrounded them and people who had heard about them. Because they were just so dangerous and people were just so afraid. You see, people had tried to hurt the Auka people. And over time, they just decided that anyone else that came to where they lived, they would just kill them straight away so that they could be safe. But you know, sometimes the Aukas even killed each other. For example, if a man one day got angry at his neighbour, he could take a long spear like you can see in this picture, a long wooden stick with the, with the sharp edge at the end, and he could kill his neighbour. But then the neighbour's family would be mad and they'd be angry and upset, so they might kill someone from his family. And then that family would be mad and angry and upset, and so they would kill someone from the other person's family again. And it would just go back and forth. And there was lots of these revenge killings amongst the Elka people. So much so that when Diama was very small, you know, when she was born, there would have been lots of Elka people. But by the time she became a little girl, over half of them had been killed. They killed off each other through all these revenge killings. And you know, the Elkas were just so dangerous that people around them just started to not care. They didn't care about them. They were too scared. But God still cared about the Elka people. He loved them and he wanted them to hear all about the gospel, about how Jesus saves you know, ever since Jesus died on the cross and rose again so that we can know him, so that we can be forgiven, God had been sending out missionaries to all over the world to share the gospel message. Do you think that God had missionaries um, to go to the Elka people and tell them about Jesus? Well, you'll have to hear what happens next after this song. Do you know the maker of the sun and Now, thousands of miles away from the Auka people in the jungle in Ecuador, there was a young boy called Nate Saint. And he lived in the United States of America and he grew up um, with his older sister and he loved hearing all about missionaries. She would read him stories about missionaries who had traveled all over the world to tell people about Jesus. People who had went to jungles, to deserts, to different cities, and shared God's love with people who had never heard about him before. You know, Nate loved hearing these stories. He would always ask his sister, please, can you read another one? But you know, Nate had a lot of different things that he loved when he was growing up. He loved to build things. 
and even though his family didn't have a lot of money, he was still able to make some really great toys. He learned how he could build a toy train, once he built a toy sailboat that could go out in the water, and one time he even built a six foot long toy airplane that he could glide through the air. He had a real uh, talent and a real passion for building things and fixing things and seeing how stuff worked. Once his parents even let him take away their, take apart their car so that he could learn how cars worked. And then he had the challenge of trying to put it all together. But when he did, it was able to drive again. He had fixed it. So he was really good at fixing things and, and dealing with, you know, machines and, and coming up with how to build things. But Nate loved uh, airplanes and he had a dream one day of being able to fly his own plane. And his brother was actually a pilot and there was one time that he took him up in a plane with him and he let Nate steer the, steer the airplane and fly it in the air. Do you think that would be fun or do you think it would be scary? I think I'd definitely be a bit scared. I love flying but I don't know if I'd be able to actually be the pilot of a plane. That'd be quite scary. But you know, flying was a big passion of Nate's. But there was something even more important to him in his life. You see, as he was growing up, he had heard all about Jesus and he had come to accept him as his saviour. He'd been forgiven by God and now he wanted to do everything he could to serve God and to tell other people all about Jesus. And you know, while Nate wasn't out in jungles or in deserts like the missionaries he had grown up learning all about, he knew that there were still a lot of people around him that he could tell about Jesus. So that's what he did. Maybe he spoke to his neighbours or to people in his school or in the shop. Um, once when he was a teenager, he even began teaching his own Bible class, telling people all about God's word and how they could read it. So he loved to share the word of God with people and tell them just about how much Jesus loved them. But as he became an adult, he got even better at flying and about knowing, learning how to fix planes. And that was what he worked at. But, you know, one time his sister, Rachel, who used to read him the stories about the missionaries, she said to him that, you know, Nate, maybe you could be a missionary. This is what you could do. Go and tell people all about Jesus. But Nate still wanted to be a pilot as well. He was in a bit of a dilemma. He couldn't decide if he should pursue being a pilot or be a missionary. And so he prayed to God and he asked God, you know, what should I do? Where should I go? What do you think God answered him with? Well, after a lot of prayer and a lot of thinking, Nate decided that God wanted him to become a missionary. Now, he had no idea where he would go. He had no idea what type of people he would meet. But he prayed and he asked God that one day he would be able to speak to someone who had never heard about Jesus and that he would be able to tell them all about Jesus. You know, I wonder, can you think who we've learned today who has never heard about Jesus? Exactly. The Elka people in Ecuador had never heard about God. And, you know, even though they didn't know it, they were in need of God and they were in need of someone to come and tell them how they can be saved from their sin. I wonder, do you think, will Nate get to go and speak to the Elka people about Jesus? Will he get to continue being a pilot and doing what he loves, flying planes? Well, you'll have to listen to our missionary story tomorrow to find out. That was a great story. Did you like our story so far? What about you, Charlie? I loved it! And I want to be a missionary when I grow up! That's great, Charlie. Maybe you want to be a missionary when you grow up. Before you can be a missionary, you need to be like the man in our story today. He needed to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus to be his saviour. You know, if you have done that, then maybe God will have you to be a missionary someday and tell other people about the Lord Jesus. I can't wait to hear what's going to happen next. Me too. Bye. Bye.